Welcome to the show that the PTA, your parents, and the asleep don't want you to hear. The Helios blog. Today, Andrew Tate debates Sneeko. Do your job, apparently. The reason she's alone is because she's difficult. Women are not accepting the bare minimum. Women fuck men they respect. All the women who say things like, I'm strong, independent, I don't need no man, like, y'all impress me. Women just gaslight each other and say what they want to hear. Well said. Made the answer. Yeah. You got any any questions from the chat for us? Uh, yeah. The, I mean, oh man, a lot of stuff came in, guys. Sorry, I'm doing a million things at once. And guys, here's the thing: I'm gonna kill the Facebook stream right now and Twitch. So come on over to YouTube, and then we're gonna kill the YouTube stream coming Rumble. in very soon as well. And you guys are all gonna have to go to Rumble. So I'm gonna give you guys a few more minutes to go ahead. But go on over to Rumble, guys. It's Rumble.com/slash Tate Speech because it's gonna be exclusive on Rumble here in a few minutes. Um, but yeah, I can go ahead and pull up one of these questions. Do you want to hit the next one, Andrew, before I, I pull up the next one? Let's get the, no, let's get the, let's get the question because the next one's going to be a, a long, a long, answer. a long one. Okay. Does so we got lying. Who, who was capping the most? <laughs> yeah, Who's ask. capping the most? Uh, and we got, uh, almost 20 K live on YouTube. And then I think we got another 27 K on rumble. So guys get ready to switch on over to rumble here in a little bit. All time high. Yeah, you, we had a lot of good questions come through, but I didn't want to interrupt the panel. G give me a second here so I can pull no, a good one up, no, Andrew. I got, I got a question for you. Sure. So, guys on the panel, what is your... Wait, what? Hold on. Myron, when a gun was pull Omec on set? Wait, I'm like, you better put that shit back down because I swear to God, I'll get up real fast. I just want to watch it. I'm itching. I'm itching. I'll help somebody right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Who's to the left? Move to the left. I said move to the left. Yo, nigga, I said move to the left. Now. All right. You two right. stupid. What the fuck you doing? Move this to the left. Right. This, this is the right. Though. Everybody get to the fucking left. All right. If bullets come down this way, I ain't getting nobody fucking hurt. Oh, I'm gonna oh, kill. I'm gonna yeah. yeah. destroy that. Oh, she shoot me. Wait, you're chilling out. Did, some, did one of these guys like flash a gun or something or? A girl did. Oh, why? Read title. JJ Academics goes in on a girl. She gets mad and pulls the blicky. Oh, sorry. Holy God. <laughs> I didn't know what Blicky was. My bad. Pulls the Blicky. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah. it's one yes. of Single mothers, Ayo. we don't do I'm that. I'm going to say, like, like, I want to see live. Nigga, watch out my way. Real Nigga, women we in Florida. do not do that. Yes, sir. Like, I don't know Nikki, what shorty was reaching me. for in her bag with a spark to dumbass in here and got a pack off her. Fuck that. Yeah, she wild. She could have got dealt. She could have got dealt with for real, but nigga, she could have got dealt with. I don't know why y'all. I don't know why y'all hold this up. Nah, cause we don't. Nigga, act, bro. You got shit to lose, bro. Chill out, bro. Yeah, but still, nigga. I don't even. I don't want to see you in the situation like that, bro. I won't do it. Let me. Let me handle some shit, bro. Once I start grabbing the mic a certain way, I'm like, you better put that shit back down because I swear to God, I'll get up real fast. Wait, who pulled the blicky? When? I'm here to help somebody right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come back, come back. Move to the left. Okay. Move to the left. I said. This is this is getting crazy. Maybe it happened on the couch. She pulled it off screen. Oh, okay. I don't know, whatever. Okay. Description of a money maker for 2022. Pulled the blicky. You can consider like, you know what? If you're young coming up in life, what can you do to make money right now? That's a good question. I can answer. Do you want to shy go first? Yeah, go ahead. Right. I think that we live in an attention economy. I think that people who can garner attention are going to be good at making money one way or another. I think we now live in a world where you have spectators and you have people who produce. It's the world is split in a binary divide between the two. And not everybody is designed to be a producer. Some people are designed to be a spectator. If I was, obviously I am a producer naturally by heart because I've lived a very diverse life. I have a lot to say and I consider, it doesn't matter what I consider, people consider my words valuable, obviously. So here I am. But if I was a spectator, let's say, and I didn't feel like I had the confidence or the knowledge or the charisma to sit on a camera and interest people, then I would try my very best to prove myself useful to a creator. And by joining their ecosystem and working alongside them, that's probably the best and easiest way to make money. There's a whole bunch of people out there that have the star factor, but they don't have the systems and the teams around them to truly be successful. So I would come along and say, listen, you can be the, sh the showman, 
I'll be the blood and guts underneath, and uh, we can do very, very well. I truly still believe, as fucked as the world is, with the Matrix and the suppression and the inflation and the Fed and all the shit we talk about, if you're a person who can turn up on time with a firm handshake... Oh, who is, shit! ...who is genuinely competent, who doesn't lie to anybody, you're going to be fine. You're That's a destiny take. Yo, I'll vibe off that one million percent. The one thing that you can always do in life, you can be the most worthless, retarded, crippled, fucked dude, like ADHD, whatever the fuck, every problem. If you can be a guy that always shows up five minutes early and you are dependable, you are reliable, you're like, get shit done, like in a timely manner, and you're communicative, you are so far ahead of so many people. Um, I've said this so many times, you can ask- Yeah, that's called work ethic. That's, most people don't have that in 2024 cake you can ask jader you can ask mr moot you can ask dan there have been a lot of premium talent people that i've had the i've worked with and then there have been like middling talent people and if you can respond to an email within 24 to 48 hours if you can deliver on a deadline if you can communicate really well you are so much better to work with than like the struggling schizophrenic artist who's like an amazing artist but they're not reliable they don't communicate they'll go months without returning an email that you have no you can't keep track of them at all like being a person that's just like five minutes early everywhere and is ruthlessly dependable is so fucking good that is such a good skill to have holy shit <clears throat> He's not wrong. Most people don't have any kind of work ethic, let alone that level. Never going to starve. You're always going to be able to make good money if you're a genuinely honest, hardworking person. Yep. I've never met an honest, hardworking person who will be there at 9 a.m. like you asked him to be, who completely fails at life. Yeah. So I think Indeed. a lot of people who are still out here failing, Indeed. they have a bunch of excuses. And yeah, we talk about how hard it is and it's true. But if you're genuinely about it and you can find somebody with that star factor and align yourself to them, I think you can make money no matter who you are. That's, I think, the best way to make money. So basically be a YouTuber. It's not no. about being a YouTuber. It's not about, it hasn't even got to be a YouTuber. It can be anything. It can be a, you can find a sorry, fucking star not. salesman and find a way to help his ass. I'm you. saying you don't always have to be the star. The biggest mistake a lot of people make is, and especially in the Western world, because we're, I talk about this all the time. I was, I was speaking about this with somebody else. I was saying America's strength and its weakness is the it, same thing. America's strength is that everybody is taught they're so unique and special and valuable. And then when you get those unique and special people, they rise to the top because they're really pushing at it from the start. But there's a lot of misery created out of people that think they're special and unique and ultra talented, but they're not really, right? And that's why you guys do so, you guys. Well, again, like if I didn't think that I had anything to say, I wouldn't be doing this. But again, I think I've proven based on how I'm doing that I do have something to say. Now again, like, they're, they're right in the sense that maybe I'm not a superstar or I don't have the potential to be a superstar, but you don't need to be a superstar. That's the bullshit. The real bullshit is that, thinking that you need to be the superstar. You need to be a superstar to be successful. But this is why America does so fantastic in, let's say, the Olympics, right? Because everyone believes that they can be a sports star and everyone works so hard, et cetera. This is why you have so many talented people, so many creatives, so many movie directors, et cetera, because everyone's told they're fantastic. But the truth is not everybody's fantastic. Indeed. And the people who are not fantastic end up frustrated. And that's why you have so much fucking crime, rob a bank, get rich or dry trying, gangsters, gangbangers. Because there's a whole bunch of people in America who think they're too good for a job and they are really not too good for a fucking job. <laughs> that's right. This is yeah. the Kevin Samuels take too. And that's I think Kevin Samuels true. did a good job at, from the little that I've seen of him, from checking everybody from having unrealistic expectations. Most of his content seemed to be shitting on women, but he'd shit on men too. He would attack men that thought that they were looking, that, that he thought were looking for way more than what they actually should, who were kind of bums, who, you know, you're trying to find a 22 year old supermodel and you're like a 27 dude working at 7 Eleven. Like you need to be more realistic about your expectations. Yep. And I think Kevin Samuels was good, and that he told women that were of a certain class to like respect your the guy that you're with too. Like you can have a guy that's earning forty, fifty thousand a year. He could be a great guy, great for you, great everything. Like they don't. Ha everybody doesn't have to be like the fucking leader, the champion, the seven million sub YouTuber, or whatever. Right? Yeah. That's the truth. Whereas if you look at other cultures, it's the difference, right? If you go to Asia or you go to some of these other places, you'll go to school. The very talented kids will be taken to the side. You're the top 1%. You're going to a separate class. And if you're not put in that separate class, you know you ain't shit. <laughs> you're just like, okay, I'm working in the factory. Yes, sir. That's my job. And you're just going to do your job because the ego ain't there. So the ego is a fantastic thing for America, but it's also a detriment. So it can, it can play both ways. But um, I think if you know the value that you bring 
bring to the world, you understand what you bring, then you could kind of put yourself in a position to win because that's Sun Tzu, right? That that's what he says. He says, know yourself and your enemy, and you'll be the victor of a thousand battles. So it starts with knowing yourself. Do you have the ability? Okay. So I don't I don't know if you guys know, but to actually be successful on YouTube, for example, you have to be able to every single week produce content. Most people can't do that. And to produce it consistently of a good quality is very hard to do. And again, you're a nobody, so it's not going to happen instantly. Destiny didn't happen instantly, neither did Sneeko and so on. You've got to put in the hard yards, right? You become special by being hardworking. It's not really about, like, what does Destiny have that makes him special? He's contrarian. Okay, there's lots of people like that. He's intelligent. Uh, okay, but he's not that intelligent. He's just above average. What does he really have? He has the work ethic, right? He works really hard consistently for more than a decade. That's what he has. To work on your own business when people tell you in the comments 1,000 times a day, you're an idiot, you're stupid, you're wrong, you're, you know, every single day. You have to be able to stick it out. Most people can't. And that's the point. We're not all going to be, like you said, leaders. Some people are followers. So. But, but, but this is my point. When, when everyone has an ego, everyone wants to be the king on the chessboard. Yeah. The, you don't I win. feel like I used, when I was talking to Sneeko, didn't I actually use the exact phrase, like, too many chiefs and not enough Indians? Probably because society works better when you've got a lot of followers and just a few leaders. If you've got a society followers, full of people that... Right? Yeah, if you've got a society full of everybody wants to be a leader, too many chiefs, not enough Indians is a saying, right? Then like society would probably fall into fucking disarray. Everything would be fucked, would be my guess. Like there's a name for this. Like it's it's a well-observed thing where everybody thinks they can they want to be a leader and everybody wants to blah blah blah. In the chess game by having endless kings. That just gives you a bunch of vulnerabilities. Everyone has to know their role and play it. I've played the role of fucking pawn, knight, the whole my whole life. I was pawn, knight, bishop, rook. You know, I've played them all. But you always and, wanted to be the king. It's not that I wanted to be. It's that if you're truly destined to be, you'll end up in a position where you're going to be. There's also... Indeed. I, I do I do believe that. Kind of aligns with kind of my virtue take where I think like the, the where I'm at right now in life is that like basically different people are good at different things. And I think you kind of owe it to yourself and the world to pursue what it is you're best at. Uh, not everybody is like cut out to be like a Hollywood entertainer yep. or not everybody is cut out to be like a leader of a multi-million dollar. But there's like nothing wrong with that. Um, and that doesn't have to be. It's not like if you weren't one of those people that your life sucks. Like I think there's plenty of people um, living lives, earning 40, 50, 60,000 a year that are living like tremendously awesome, wonderful lives. Like that's super possible. Um, the idea that you have to be like one of these like leader people is just not true. I don't think. Indeed. Seen as a king of, of your empire, wherever your empire is or whatever it is. God has a plan for all of us. My plan was to do my job to the best of my ability, whatever my job was at the time. People call me arrogant, et cetera, et cetera. I spent fucking 11 years obeying my coach like he was God. Run here. Okay, seven miles, 4 a.m. Oh, fuck. All right. I, I, would, I, I just listened. I didn't get successful by running my mouth. I didn't get successful by knowing everything. I got successful by listening. I listened to somebody else. I got a lot of emails after that combo too, and I should have been pointing out more things. I, I didn't even think about it, but like I got a lot of emails for like, bro, like 90% of CEOs have college degrees. And then also, what do successful people do? Do I, I think I count as a successful person. Like I told my kid, like Nathan is going to college and you're getting a degree before you ever hop on a YouTube shit. Most likely you're gonna like, I'm not gonna let him just like, oh, I'm out of high school, time to do this shit. Fuck you, you go to college, get a degree. And I think if you look at most successful people, what are they trying to do? Like, what do successful people do? They're literally known for like trying to scam schools to get their fucking kids to get into the best schools, right? What was that whole thing where they're like paying off like school administrators to let like they're trying so hard, like wealthy people will cheat to get their kids into the best fucking schools. Like that's how fucking important it is for them. Um, so the idea that like, um, that, oh no, like wealthy people know that school is a waste of time. Like, haven't you heard of these two exceptions? It's bullshit. Yeah. Exception people, like exceptional people, like, well, Musk got degrees, fucking Bezos got degrees, Bill Gates was super smart before he even went into college, he was working on shit, Zuckerberg got degrees, like 99% of these, like, super billionaire people are all really well-educated people. It's very, 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 very rare that somebody comes out of nothing and becomes, like, a billionaire. That is exceptionally rare. Most of these people are really well-educated. Fucking Donald Trump! I'm pretty sure. Wait, let's check. He's educated, he's just low GPA, he's a bad student. But we, th we think he has ADHD. I don't actually know. Donald Trump, Wikipedia. I know this motherfucker graduated from some bullshit. Trump family must have.
This motherfucker skipped the draft to finish school, okay? Did he finish? Hold on. Oh, look, even Donald Trump got his four-year degree at Wharton School of the University of Pennsylvania. And this guy came for money and had a dad that gave him money, okay? And even this motherfucker finished his four-year degree, okay? To my father my entire life, but listen to my coach my entire life. I just done exactly as I was told. He said punch, he said jab, I jabbed. That was it. So I just obeyed. So I played my I played my part and played my role for a very long time before I got to a position now where I have, I don't know, a total of maybe 60, 70 people working for me across all these different Damn, industries. Damn, that's now insane. I'm the, the empire, blah, blah, blah. But I, I, you're saying I always knew I wanted to be king. I don't think I did. I just wanted to be very, very competent and do my job very, very well. And, this and is even where now to this day, if, I, if, if Elon Musk and I were to have a conversation one day and he were to say, I want you to help me with X, I'm not going to walk in there saying, I'm the king though, bro. Top G. I'm like, you know what, Mr. Elon? Sure. I'll be the knight. Let's go to fucking Mars. <laughs> like, it's, there's too much ego involved. Yeah. And, and this is the problem with a lot of people. Egos hold them back. Ego is going to get your ass killed. Ego will put you in the fucking morgue. It'll put you in jail. And it'll also destroy a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you think you're the best at everything and know everything and have nothing to learn from anyone, you're an idiot. A lot of opportunities. I can tell you another story. I have a whole bunch of friends who are still broke, uh, even though they've watched my come up and I've tried to help them a million times and they'll message like, hey, man, just had to leave my job again. And they're trying to hint at borrowing money. <laughs> I'm like, why? What happened? Man, my boss, he's fucking rude to me. Bro, you're a wagey, and he's your boss. Do your job. What the fuck? Do your job. Like, you can't be messaging me saying, oh, yeah, you're top G. I'm a G. I don't take shit from my boss. Well, you have to, do you're the boss. Exactly. Yeah. That's, you, you got to pay the cost. <laughs> That's the game. You have to know your part and play it well. How much of it is determined by God? You're saying, I'm wondering what you think of the difference between free will and determinism. You're saying that some people are meant to just be pawns, but how much of it is dependent on your mentality and your belief as a youngin. People decide to be pawns. Nobody is destined to be anything they don't decide themselves to be. Right. I hate that um, people are like, uh, one, I, whatever, it's all good. But people on my subreddit were triggering me. They're like, oh, he said it so much more eloquently than Destiny did. Like, well, yeah, he did. But that's because every three words I would try to speak, Snake would jump down my fucking throat saying essentially the same shit. I couldn't get fucking anything out without Snake was screaming down my throat over all It's like, Jesus. If you're truly uncomfortable with something, you can't exist there. When I was a pawn, I did my job to the best of my ability, but what, let's let's change it. When I was a brokey, I knew I was a brokey. I've, I've, trust me, I knew very well I was a brokey. My life reflected it, as did my bank balance. But I was uncomfortable in it to a position where I couldn't sleep at night. I had sleepless nights just laying there thinking, how the fuck are people buying Ferraris? I can't pay rent. This doesn't make sense. I have to escape. I can't live this way. If you're genuinely uncomfortable, if I set you on fire, you're going to stand up. You're going to move. If I set you on fire and you're chilling, then you can't say that the fire's burning. The people who are broke and they have been broke for years and years and years and they're still sleeping in late playing video games Base. are comfortable enough being broke to stay broke. I, I couldn't be comfortable in that position. If you put me in a shitty position, I'm so desperately uncomfortable. We can change it from money to something else. Dude, what is? This? If I was morbidly obese, it wouldn't last long. I'm telling you now. With me, I couldn't do it. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I'd be mad at myself. I'd be angry. I'd be self-conscious. I'd fix it. The person who's been morbidly obese for 10 years and goes, I'm trying. You ain't fucking trying. You are very comfortable and very happy to be who you are. Facts. So anybody who's a pawn is com Indeed. comfortable and happy being a pawn. Otherwise, they wouldn't be one anymore. They'd at least have moved up. So when I say determined by God, what I'm saying is that God is producing all of us. I believe God exists. We're all made in his image to a degree. And certain people have looked at their place in life and said, this is okay. This is enough for me to sleep at night. And if that's fine, you're going to sleep. But if you were like me, if you're looking at your bitch going, she's a seven, my car is broke. My car ain't shit. Apartment's small. I know I'm better than this. I have to find a way to escape. Then, then motivation and the whole idea of motivation becomes a, it gets destroyed. People say, I don't have motivation. I didn't never had motivation. I had a burning desire to fucking fix my life. I didn't need to wake up and get mo. I didn't have to watch YouTube to want to make some fucking money. I was like, I wanted money. Like, I didn't need YouTube to tell me, bro, you're broke. Like, so I, I don't think that anybody is destined to be a pawn. I think people decide to be pawns. And I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of it. I can sit here right now as a multimillionaire, as a multimillionaire, a person who has hundreds of millions of dollars, and I can say, if you go to CobraTake.com right now, you can sign up to a free newsletter and I will email you every day for free lessons from a multimillionaire for free. All it's going to take is 13 seconds of your time to go to CobraTake.com and sign up to the email letter. And maybe 10% of the people watching will do it. And 90% will go, 
Mm. And, uh, hey man, being broke sucks. Because they're fucking dumbasses. Well, that's their decision. I, I don't. Be- I believe it's decisions. People who are broke decided to be broke. It really is not that difficult to make money out here. I don't really. I don't really don't think it is. What is uh, the Justin, biggest? What about you? Good. One thing you can make money from this year. Somebody coming up. Man, there's a million ways to make a million dollars. I think you have to pick something. Put your time in, get competent at it, stay in the fight long enough to make the fucking money. There's, there, there. That's literally the biggest thing. That's, isn't that what I just said? <laughs> you gotta stay in the fight long enough to actually make it. That means this is measured in years, not in weeks. One can't just wake up and be better than others. It is a habit. There's no one way to make a million bucks. In regards to what Andrew's saying, especially about the guys that are superstars or they're not, look at me, dude. I'm a multimillionaire too, but I got no problem. In fact, me and Andrew had a, talk, a conversation about this maybe six months or a year ago. I'm like, Andrew, you can be Michael Jordan. I'll play Scottie Pippen. Facts all day. I'm trying to win Literally. fucking trophies, bro. And there's nothing better in this world than to do shit with your boys. So if you got somebody in your group that's that that is Michael Jordan, let them be fucking Michael Jordan. I'm not insecure about that. And when you, know you have, what I'm saying? and when you have a diverse group, when you have a group of true competent people, you'll realize that it changes role to role anyway. There are certain scenarios yeah. where it's X guys to fucking G, and yeah. there's an X guy he's to G. Yeah. That's how it goes. When it comes to boozing, it's like Tristan, bro, <laughs> <laughs> bro, you win. Like yeah. you, that's just the way it is. That's what happens when yeah. you're around genuine competence. Yeah. What separate? What's the biggest deciding factor, Andrew? That separates you from the 90%, the retards, the people who don't Jesus, want it. Why do you make the so decision to go and get it, but most people don't? What's the biggest, is it the way you grew up? Is it the fighting? Is it being broke? That's a good question. And that actually leads into my other question fantastically, which is amazing. I, I, was, I was raised for competence and I was raised for excellence. So to a degree, I can say that I'm lucky by the fact that I had such fantastic parents and that they told me from a very, very young age who I had to be and how I had to live. I hear a lot of things from people saying, you know, if your father's too amazing and he can overshadow you and it makes the, the you know, the kid fail, that I can't speak to that because I had the complete opposite experience. My father was my hero. I wanted to be exactly like him. And all I had to do was copy him and do as I was told. And I was going to be fantastic. I learned how to listen at a very young age and learned how to obey, o- obey my elders, do as I was told, eat my vegetables. My life has never truly fucked up. There's a lot of successful people who will tell you like, yeah, my life fucked up and then I recovered. I went to jail, I got out, all this shit. My life's never fucked up. My life has always been wake up, do the fucking work. That's all it's ever been. And if you wake up and do the fucking work every single day, I'm 36 years old. How can I not have hundreds of millions of dollars? All I've done is work. All I've done is get up and do what I'm supposed to do. All I've done is get up, eat right, train, work, (laughs) answer the call, be on time. Like, how am I going to not have hundreds of millions of dollars? It's it's almost like, I don't understand how you messed that up. It's because people are just lazy. So, but that feeds into my other question I want to ask all of you. How big of an impact do you think family has on a man? Because I think we're speaking majorly to men. And what advice would you give to men who love their family and they know their family love them, but their family... Holds them back. Their family their family are not living the lives they want to live. Oh. The advice they're giving is not the advice they want to Close follow. Enough. Like, do you have any stories or do you have any advice or what kind of impact do you think a, a negative family environment can have on a man? And what should you do in a scenario when his parents truly love him and truly care for him, but they're telling him to, like, put on a mask and go to college? What do you think? That was that? me. Let's start. Oh, so there you go. So that, this, we have an interesting story coming up. My dad has recently been telling me since I've been getting into the red pill and getting to these ideas and fully devoting myself to this message that he, now he agrees with a lot of what I say. And... He's blue pilled. He, I, we can't talk about a lot of the things, but he did what 85% of the population did. Yeah. He went to college, told me to go to college, told all my siblings to go to college, but ultimately he did give up on his dream. His dream was to be a filmmaker, was to be a creative, and he decided to fully devote himself to his family. And for me, that gave me the opportunity to fully focus on what I wanted to do because we came up in a good household. Yeah. He was there. He was a good inspiration. He was a good role model, just like your dad. Yeah. But... I had to separate from a lot. I disappointed him in a lot of ways. Dropping out of school, dropping out of college, they didn't talk to me for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not taking what everybody else was taking, they were really upset with me. I'm sure a lot of people in the chat can relate. They ended up taking something that everybody else is saying that you're a bad person, you're gonna kill my grandma if you don't take this too. Yeah. So I think you just have to, you have to decide for yourself 
what's the best for yourself and make the sacrifice that you're I like how vaccines get rolled eventually. into like everything these days. <laughs> like, okay. What about you, Walter? Um, so I had two examples in my life. Uh, Robert, because I guess it talks about rich dad, poor dad. So I have my real dad, which is um, basically a deadbeat dad. But, you know, that's my dad. And I have my granddad. And growing up, I was supposed to follow the family blueprint, which is go to school, get a degree, to go to family business. But I saw my dad and I was like, damn, like, he's pretty much just like living life, doing whatever he wants, but he's not responsible. But my granddad was like an anchor. He was like the one taking care of the family, took us on trips. You know, he bought me a car, bought my mom a house. He's like, damn, he's the man of the household. So I had to make a choice. Who, who, who do I want to follow? My dad or, or my granddad? And I chose my granddad because for me personally, my dad would say, hey, son, uh, I'll come pick you up. And he never would show up. My granddad would say, hey, son, I'm, I'll come pick you up. He'd always show up my time. So me personally, is making a choice to say, you know what? Who do I want to be like more? My granddad or my dad? And I chose my granddad. So for me, it was just making a choice. I think all of us have that voice in our head that tells us what we're supposed to be doing. That's the soul, supposedly, according to Jordan Peterson. All right, let's end the video there. Hit the like, hit the sub, hit all the notifications. Drop me a donation like Hunter M, Adrian Alton, and Bobby Dylan, Renaissance Press, and Brian, shout out to you, most recent Patreon subscriber. Thank you. Buy my books at bit.ly slash Books. My Patreon can be found at patreon.com slash the Helios blog. If you'd like coaching, message me at theheliosblog at gmail.com. That's my email. I'll slot you right in. Thank you so much for listening, guys, especially if you listen to the end. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time.